Wyatt Earp established himself as a living legend over the course of a long and frequently difficult existence. He held positions as a saloon keeper, brothel owner, lawman in various jurisdictions, gambler, gold and silver miner, and professional boxing match referee at various points in his life. His critics asserted that he was a dishonest referee and an unreliable source for tales of his adventures, and that his fame was exaggerated. Check out these 12 amazing facts about Wyatt Earp. Number 12. Wyatt's brother was a U.S. Marshal. In the summer of 1879, Virgil Earp served as the town constable of Prescott, Arizona, and because of his proximity to Tombstone, he was aware of its mining activities. Wyatt made the decision to go along with him. Doc Holliday, Big Nose Kate, his brother James and his wife, his common-law wife Maddie, and them. Prior to the group's arrival in Prescott, Virgil was chosen to serve as the district's deputy U.S. Marshal. Virgil was aware that his brothers were approaching, so he waited until they arrived before sending his brothers and their wives with him to Tombstone. To see what he could do at the casino tables there, Doc Holliday stayed in Prescott. Number 11. Dodge City became too civilized for Wyatt's taste in 1879. The cattle that had come to Dodge City to take advantage of the railheads that delivered the beef on the hoof to the stockyards of Chicago had sparked the town's initial growth boom at the time Wyatt Earp arrived. The cowboys let off steam by drinking, gambling, and occasionally vandalizing the town after weeks on the route. The municipality had instituted gun-carrying restrictions by 1879 and civilization's trappings had begun to spread. Number 10. Earp and Masterson were involved in the shooting of a drunken cowboy. A performance at the Comique Theater was interrupted in July 1878 when George Hoyt, a drunken cowboy, fired shots up the street in front of it. Earp, Masterson, and a posse pursued Hoyt and his group as they raced out of the city. Later that morning, just south of the town, close to the Arkansas River, Earp and Masterson hunted down Hoyt, and in accordance with his own narrative, Earp shot and killed the cowboy. Contrary to what Earp told a biographer, Hoyt passed away from gangrene a few weeks after the encounter, according to Dodge City newspaper reporting of the incident. Number 9. Earp was well known to Bat Masterson during his tenure. Wyatt Earp met fellow lawman and Western legend Bat Masterson while he was in Dodge City. They both had a passion for boxing, and at that time, Earp was an accomplished referee who was familiar with the Marquis of Queensbury rules that governed behavior within the ring. Masterson's level of passion for boxing and other sports, such as horse racing, inspired him to pursue a career as a reporter in New York. Number 8. Doc Holliday saved Wyatt's life. Doc Holliday and Big Nose Kate, who were believed to be his wife, arrived in Dodge City in the summer of 1878 with the intention of robbing the cowboys who had just finished a cattle drive of their well-earned salaries. Holiday was a gambler, and Kate was a prostitute. That summer, after shooting up the street outside, a gang of inebriated cowboys entered the Long Branch Saloon where Holiday was gambling. A number of guns were already drawn and aimed at Earp when he entered the saloon as the town marshal to apprehend the outlaws. Number 7. He was a deputy marshal. After spending the winter in the Black Hills, Earp made his way back to Dodge City, where he became a deputy in the town's marshal office in 1877. He received his appointment as a United States deputy marshal in the fall of that year and was assigned to track down a bank robber who had escaped to Texas. He arrived to the Beehive Saloon in Clear Fork, Texas, in the early months of 1878, where he initially encountered Doc Holliday. The dentist and the gambler informed him that the man he was pursuing had left for Kansas and returned to Dodge City. Number 6. He spent a winter in the mining camp of Deadwood. Earp learned of the discovery of gold in the Black Hills of the Dakota Territory while he was at Dodge City, and like many others, he set off to make his fortune there. He spent the winter of 1876 to 1877 there, but because of his tardy arrival at the bustling camp, he was unable to stake a claim. Earp instead brought cut firewood into the town that had been cleared by miners and prospectors. His brother Morgan first accompanied him in Deadwood, but the lack of a gold strike eventually forced him to leave and head back to Dodge City. Although Wild Bill Hickok passed away a month prior to Wyatt's arrival in the camp, it is commonly said that Earp knew him in Deadwood. It is plausible. 
however, that he sold firewood to Al Swearingen, proprietor of the Gem Saloon. Number five, he was a bouncer and a police officer. Texas steers and cowboys were both transported by cattle drives to the Wichita Railhead and the local saloons and brothels, respectively. In his brother's brothel, Earp served as a bouncer before becoming a deputy town marshal. The only time his gun was fired while he was in Wichita was when it inadvertently went off when it slid out of his holster and hit the ground. After beating a former deputy in a fistfight over allegations that Wyatt was exploiting his position to secure jobs for his brothers, Wichita grew too hot for Earp to handle. Wyatt moved to Dodge City in the spring of 1876 after James Earp established a new brothel there. Number 4. He was charged with running a brothel in Peoria. Earp's downhill trajectory continued in 1872 when he was detained alongside his brother Morgan, a number of women, and other people on suspicion of operating a brothel. They paid a fine and were let go. He was detained once more that autumn for running a second brothel on board a steamer he owned. He was detained together with Sally Heckel, who identified herself as his wife. There is no proof that Earp actually went on a buffalo hunt during the years 1873 and 1874, despite his later claims to the contrary. His brother James Earp ran yet another brothel in Wichita after he was no longer welcomed in Peoria. He and Sally, who went by the name Sarah Earp, arrived in the bustling cattle town in 1874. Number 3. His first experience as a lawman was in Lamar, Missouri. In 1869, the Earp family moved to Missouri, where Wyatt succeeded his father in holding the position of town constable. There, in 1870, he wed his first wife, but when she died suddenly of typhoid disease, Wyatt was greatly shaken and his finances plummeted. He was accused of embezzling money he was supposed to be collecting for Lamar's schools. Additionally, he was sued by local residents for declaring inflated amounts of money collected, pocket the difference, and causing residents to lose property in the process. He was accused of stealing horses in 1871. When Earp broke out of jail while awaiting trial, he fled to Peoria, Illinois, where Missouri law couldn't pursue him. Number two, he supported the building of the Transcontinental Railroad by freighting supplies. By 1868, Earp had gained a reputation as an expert freighter and started shipping goods to the Union Pacific Railroad's railhead as it moved further west. While working at the railhead, he picked up the skills to officiate boxing contests and play cards, earning a reputation as a fair but tough official. On July 4, 1869, in Cheyenne, Wyoming, he presided over a fight that included Professor Mike Johnson, who later instructed future American President Theodore Roosevelt at the New York Athletic Club in self-defense. An estimated 3,000 spectators saw the bout, which is a sizable crowd for a bare-knuckle boxing match. Number 1. He spent most of his early boyhood in Pella, Illinois. When the American Civil War started, Wyatt Earp was too young to enlist, but he made many efforts to flee his house and give false information to recruiters, each of which was foiled by his father. His father, a Mexican War veteran, was in charge of recruiting and preparing companies of soldiers for the Union war effort. Wyatt Earp's father, Nicholas Earp, assembled a wagon train in the spring of 1864 to travel to San Bernardino in distant California. Wyatt arrived there in mid-December and immediately started looking for work, using the knowledge he had learned from driving wagons on the cross-country journey. He worked as a teamster in California before to the Civil War. What do you think of the video? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.